Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League 2015 season. This is week two and I am excited to bring you this game that almost didn't happen and uh, to get into that really quickly, uh, the match is between uh, on the blue side uh, team LinkedIn and on the red side team Twitch and I'll get into uh, that a little bit more here in a moment but just to briefly explain the situation, technically um, Team Twitch did uh, not make it in time. They were literally one minute late <laughs> to checking into the lobby uh, to prevent a forfeiture here. Um, so technically there is a forfeiture um, from the Twitch side giving the win, at least in theory, to LinkedIn. But since we are all such good, generous people here, um, LinkedIn has offered to uh, continue to uh, play the game regardless and that is a very generous offer because they are uh, the decided underdogs in this game but back to the teams of course LinkedIn social media company uh, and focuses around uh, creating like a social media network equivalency of like a Facebook but for your job so that's pretty cool um, twitch obviously the infamous uh, gaming side of Justin TV. Uh, most of these uh, casts for After Hours Gaming League are being streamed on Twitch. Um, so definitely <laughs> something you're probably familiar with there. And both teams are playing for the charity Child's Play. Child's Play, fantastic charity. Um, tries to bring children who are in the hospital or uh, domestic uh, abuse shelters uh, the joy of gaming to try and help them reconnect with their childhood um, get some of that spark back and actually be able to just be a kid again um, after whatever trauma they've gone through. So <laughs> we do see uh, that spicy little Kogma hover here, but uh, let's get into the pick and ban phase. Uh, we see uh, some uh, not too surprising bans um, coming out from both sides here, though that Malzahar ban is slightly unusual. I'm not sure uh, if that's specifically something that they uh, feel uh, particularly like their mid laner is weak playing against, or uh, they feel that that might have been a pocket pick uh, for this LinkedIn team. Uh, but either way, we do see the Malzahar ban along with Rise of Lucian for the red side. And on the blue side, uh, Fizz, Leeson, and Orianna. So there is quite a bit of focus on this mid lane uh, champion pool uh, being banned out. So I'm uh, interested to see what these mid laners are going to choose. And they will, in fact, both be the final picks. So uh, with that pool a little bit tapped, um, We'll see if uh, Red Side is able to actually successfully uh, get a good matchup in here and be able to pick that counter uh, so that they can make sure uh, that uh, they actually have a favorable matchup in that mid lane this game. But looking at the lanes right now, we do see um, Leona Corky for the blue side uh, in that bottom lane. That is a particularly strong combo. Uh, the early game potential at all in with Leona at level 2 even at level 3 as well. Um, with that Corky, if they are leveling first, is going to be a nightmare. Jinx, much more oriented towards the later game. Um, so even before the infamous uh, power spike from Corky, uh, that is going to be a pretty rough lane uh, for uh, the red side here, uh, despite having that Thresh, which will give them a little bit stronger disengage, but Leona, um, a pretty good matchup into that Thresh. Uh, because even Thresh can't stop a Leona engage. And it does look like we will be seeing a Jace and Viger pick up here. Um, so, theoretically, a little bit of flex picking there. Um, Viger could swap into the top lane and send Jace mid if they do go with this Kassadin lock in here, which they will. So, we might actually see some shenanigans here. It looks like, um, unless if we see a uh, swap right here. It uh, looks like they probably will be sending that Jace to the top lane, which is where he does in fact belong. But uh, even if they uh, stick with the laning champions uh, and don't swap that out, they might uh, still do some lane swapping once in game here to try and uh, bully that Kassadin in the early game uh, to make sure that he can't use his uh, magic damage shield that he does get off of his Q. Uh, so, and, you know, Viger has a particularly weak early game. Viger essentially the AP version of Nasus with his ability to, uh, farm up his overall ability power with his Q, uh, if he last hits with it. So, Viger, um, even though you see most Vigers go glass cannon nowadays, 
not necessarily the strongest uh, matchup into a Cassidy, who you do want to punish early. Jace would be a much stronger uh, matchup, not just, of course, because he's an AD champion that does counter that shield, but also just because he has a lot of poke potential early and can really uh, create some pressure onto that Cassidy, who did go ignite um, and not heal, so or barrier even. So that will be um, a very... Uh, volatile lane in the mid lane if that is in fact the matchup. Uh, if we do see uh, the top laners both hanging around in the top lane where they should be going, um, Malphite into Jace uh, will be a particularly bloody matchup. Uh, Jace of course going to be uh, using that ranged advantage to get as much harass in on this Malphite as he tries to farm as possible and probably shove that lane in quite a bit. Malphite has a lot of trouble farming under turret early and if you can force him to farm under turret early, uh, he's not only has trouble doing so, but uh, to have to attempt to do so, he burns through his entire mana pool very quickly. Um, so he's not going to be able to uh, put any harass back towards the Jace. Um, so Jace will essentially be getting some free poke into the Malphite uh, that will be able to, or will not be able to be answered. Unless if we see Malphite go something like a flask start to try and get some uh, mana regeneration there. Um, but that is fairly unlikely. In the jungle we do see pretty strong picks for both sides. Uh, Jarvan the fourth for uh, the blue side and Wukong for the red side. It looks like um, we have a really strong uh, amount of engage potential for this red team here. Uh, of course, Thresh can start off any engagement with that um, incredible CC he brings on a pick if he can actually land it on a uh, solid target, which there are plenty of. Jace, Corky, and Viger looking to be a pretty squishy team uh, if he can find a way to weave that hook in between the Leona and Jarvan. Um, but even if we don't, uh, we of course have uh, the potential for Malphite to flash into range and get a good uh, team knockup with his ult. Uh, and that could lead, uh, if they have some good coordination from this red side, uh, they could be able to set up uh, some chain CC here with that Malphite ult and then the Wukong ult immediately after with Wukong using his gap close to jump in right after the Malphite ults uh, and then start his ultimate uh, to get a double knockup back to back to just chain that CC and make sure uh, blue team has a few seconds just suspended essentially bouncing in the air, um, unable to really do too much. Uh, except takes some damage while uh, that Jinx wails away in the back line. Uh, gives some time for Kassanen to ult in, uh, hit his full combo, and have his ultimate up again by the time that Chain CC does stop. Uh, so if something does go wrong coming out of that Chain CC, Kassanen will be able to ult back away. Um, so that looks like late game is going to be a very strong uh, team fight oriented team here for the red side. As we get into this loading screen here. Let's uh, swap this screen on over here once we actually get this loaded on up. And then we can analyze some of the complexities of this blue team here. Alright, there we go. Beautiful. So, um, for the blue side, uh, we do see that Corky, uh, Leona, Viger, Jace, Jarvan. So, uh, the, what they're going to be looking for in these team fights, first and foremost, they're going to be looking for picks here. Uh, with that Jarvan, Leona, and Viger, uh, there's just immense amounts of CC um, that's really hard CC um, to create any, to really punish people who get out of position. And with the Wukong and Malphite that are going to be looking to uh, position for really strong engagements if they get slightly overextended trying to look for that engagement potential uh, Blue side will have a very uh, good chance to uh, Actually jump in uh, or jump excuse me on top of uh, whoever that was and <laughs> The notable no twitch pick here for the twitch team. That's, that's <laughs> very funny in uh, chat right there um, but yeah, they will be able to collapse on somebody, really punish any uh, mispositioning uh, while either the Wukong or Malphite are looking for that team fight, team fight potential. We do see some good ward coverage here from the red side, um, getting some pretty forward wards here in on this blue team uh, on the red side of their jungle. Make sure that I 
actually have this chat dis disabled here. I do, in fact, so I guess we just get to see the in-game chat. But that's fine. It looks like some friendly uh, in-game chat distractions during the opening part of the match is going to be totally fine right here. We do see uh, Wukong dancing around, doing some fancy recall stuff. I do love that skin. Very evil, very dark. Uh, it loves me the darkness. So we do see a blue side ward coming down here to make sure um, that nothing is going wrong. Um, theoretically, they could have uh, dipped in here, so they're not too sure... Um, that this red side jungle is clear, but that ward will give them some security, especially uh, seeing this Kassadin come in to throw down a ward on the blue, so they will know that this is warded uh, for the red side to see which uh, uh, jungle camp they will be starting. Uh, and it looks like, uh, regardless, Wu, or, yes, Wukong will be starting the Gromp over here. Um, it looks like they're actually going to start blue over here. An unusual start here. Um, we might see some uh, buddy system in the jungle. No, Jace is going to go straight to lane. An unusual choice to start uh, the blue buff here. We're going to try and keep an eye on this uh, Jarvan to see how he uh, sustains through these uh, first few camps here. Uh, so be sure to keep an eye on that health bar. It looks like um, Jarvan's going to be largely okay, but we'll see here in the next couple camps. Uh, Cassidy gaining some good harass down in the mid lane with that Q. He does have... Um, some very good range onto that Q, so if he can uh, create some uh, potential uh, in this early game while Viger is trying to save his uh, Q for farming to increase his ability power, uh, he will be able to get some good harass down to start initially, and look at that, that is quite a bit of damage onto this Viger, um, who did start with the flask, but we do see Jinx coming in with the level 2, that's that level 2 potential turnaround, from the blue side that they don't want to see and Leona actually going to be picking up the kill there onto that Jinx with that last auto attack. Thresh is going to be forced to try and run away. The minion block going to be too strong making sure that uh, Thresh can actually get out of there. But even despite getting the hook to start off that engagement that was the potential I was talking about earlier from this quirky Leona uh, bottom lane in the early game. They're not going to want to uh, be fighting that when the tables are matched and unfortunately they did hit level 2 at approximately the same time Thresh is going to be taking some more damage for uh, trying to take some of that XP trying to get some CS while his Jinx is back so uh, that is unfortunate for the Thresh going to be very low probably have to back here himself he does have the biscuits though that he's chomping down on so that will be um, some good sustain for him to actually heal on up and maybe uh, not have to go back here until there's an opportune time. Viger not going to be able to land the extra harassment there, but uh, will be uh, getting some uh, damage back onto that Kassadin. No, not too much. We do see um, Viger, of course, mana, his mana pool is quite low right now. Thresh stepping forward, taking some minion damage there, but getting that... Uh, sweet gold for auto attacking an enemy champion in the face and as we see uh, a potential gank coming up here top Wukong might be stealthy no he did pop out just for a moment if Jace was paying attention he will see that but it looks like Viger gonna ignite the Kassadin who does not have his ultimate yet and his flash is up but he does flash but the burn with the last shot from Viger actually gonna be enough to finish him off there and Wukong just going to be heading mid here to try and make sure none of that experience is missed. But that will be uh, the kill going over to this Viger here. Definitely not what you want to see on a Viger who's going to just become a nightmare the later the game goes on. Even more so than the infamous Kassadin will be. So definitely didn't want to see that in that matchup where Kassadin was hoping to get some uh, bullying early onto this uh, Viger. We do see the Leone engage as the Jarvan comes in here, and that will be Jinx getting caught out. No, the, the Lantern going to pull her away, but not going to be enough. The last shot coming in from uh, Jarvan going to finish her, and that will be a kill going on to this Jarvan here. So Jinx definitely very far behind now in this lane. Will be hitting a nice item break to actually get some uh, AD coming back to the lane, but definitely not how she wanted to start this lane. Just wanted to try and survive here to get to that late game where she can be a nightmare uh, for this red team. But unfortunately it looks like that Corky uh, with those two assists, unfortunately not getting the kill credit on either of those kills, uh, but those two assists will get him ahead even further in experience in this bottom lane, which is 
Definitely not what you want to lane against uh, if you're Jinx. A Corky with an experience lead is going to be a severe problem. You do see uh, Kassadin, um getting his shield up when he goes in to harass, so any return harassment, even if it did land, would be largely blocked. Um, but we do see J4 coming into this mid lane again, forcing Kassadin away. Um, Kassadin, after that first death, is actually quite respecting him, even though it is just him with this Wukong coming in. Uh, J J4 realizing the Viger did not follow him, gonna think better of actually chasing too deep into that jungle there. Uh, we do see Kassadin starting with the tier first, uh, trying to stack that up, so gonna mean even more uh, possible uh, damage potential uh, coming in onto him uh, in this laning phase. So. Uh, gonna be definitely something he wants to uh, be careful of uh, Possibly invest in some more ward coverage here or even get the uh, uh, Wukong to try and ward around him with his trinket uh, as much as possible We do see the stalkers blade pick up uh, from this J4 here uh, as opposed to the Rangers trailblazer for Wukong So Wukong gonna be looking to farm the lane or his camps a bit more as Kassadin goes in, but the J4 was waiting right there, so Kassadin actually ulting into the gank because J4 was much closer. Gonna not work out too favorable for him, and that will be the kill going on to this J4, but it looks like, yes, he will go down to the Ignite on Kassadin, so Kassadin gonna be getting the credit there. Uh, Wukong trying to get a, a little bit more trading going down before he leaves this lane. Gonna get some good trades, but that minion damage is quite a lot, and that gets him very low for Jace to just come in and... <coughs> Excuse me, and use that shot to just clean him up uh, as he tries to back away with that single shot. So, definitely getting a little greedy there, chasing that Vagar, trying to get as much damage in as possible, and maybe squeeze out another kill for the red side. Actually, going to be giving a kill over to the blue side, and we see already a substantial gold lead starting. 2k lead, as they are 5 and 1 at this point. Uh, we do uh, need to be on the lookout for this blue side to try and turn that into an early dragon, possibly. Um, Thresh thinking the same thing, trying to establish some vision here in the uh, river by the dragon pit. Um, J4 going to push him back, but uh, not really able to uh, clear out any of that vision yet, as he does not have his sweeping trinket. Um, so we do see uh, that it could be the saving grace here. Uh, for this, uh, oh, unfortunately, uh, Wukong gonna be getting the kill, uh, on that, uh, just make sure that's correct, yes, gonna be getting the kill onto that blue buff, so Kassadin not gonna have the blue buff, even though they tried to hand it over, uh, very costly mistake, as Kassadin definitely needs that, uh, to try and stack up that tier as much as possible, and be able to actually use his ultimate, given how much his ultimate drains his mana nowadays. Um, and they do not have a sweeper, so they're not going to be able to clear out this vision. If they want to try and do this dragon, despite the early lead, they're going to be doing it in vision. And Red Side just really out-positioning uh, the blue team here with that teleport in from the Malphite. Uh, looks like the Corky will probably be going down. Leona trying to shield actually might em end up giving her life up here. She will. That will be two kills going over to the red side. The Jinx the ultimate is missing and the Thresh will be going down to one more auto attack. He does die to the Ignite in the end. And the turret, they're fighting under the turret right now. Jinx accidentally autoing the turret. Lots of damage coming in. They are able to juggle that aggro really well though. And that will be the ace for the red side and just like that the tables have turned, and we are seeing uh, an attempt at dragon here. I'm not sure if this Kassan and Jinx are going to be tanky enough to do it, even with the Malphite coming in here. This is going to be pretty close with that new AoE damage coming in from the dragon. We'll see uh, if they are able to juggle this aggro just well enough, and it looks like Malphite's going to be pretty tanky and able to tank that up just enough for the Jinx DPS to enable it. And yes, that will be the first dragon going over to the red side <laughs> and again just like that the tables have been equalized now uh, if not tilted back towards the red side uh, the first dragon going over to them a critical dragon indeed um, as the junglers pick up their red buffs here uh, so that will be only now a 400 gold advantage to the blue side and that's definitely not going to be enough to compensate for that first dragon so blue uh, definitely going to have to rethink 
uh, their positioning here and their decision making going into team fights because they will be in the disadvantage now um, unless if they can get some uh, really strong engagements that go in their favor um, or get some engagements that start off against a really uh, a couple of low uh, HP players here. If I are looking to maybe get some harass down on that Wukong, but gonna think better of it. Uh, gonna choose to save the mana instead. Jinx now able to farm under the turret with that BF sword pickup, but there's the bush ward, the face check to try and throw down a ward a little bit deeper into that bush than he might have wanted to, knowing that that J4 was there, and that's definitely what you want to see. Uh, if you're the blue team here, start to re-snowball those lanes again and get those picks coming in. But then, in the meantime, was a kill onto this Cassidy in here, killing the Vigar, uh almost out of the turret range here. So Cassidy, four and two at this point, um, gonna be uh, starting to hit his stride. Gonna be coming uh, quite a pest here for the blue team. Um, he does have that catalyst now built, so he will have lots more sustain coming in. J4 gonna burn that teleport to try and make sure he doesn't miss any of this farm up here uh, or that experience in the top lane as Leona rotates around to claim uh, the XP and experience in the bottom lane. But in the meantime, that will be a kill onto Jinx from the Jarvan. Uh, Jinx just a little bit far forward. We actually are gonna go back really quickly here to see what happened there. Jinx uh, farming this out. Uh, sticking with her minions, thinking she was a little secure here. But J4 did in fact wrap around. There was a ward here, and it looks like Jinx just didn't see a Jinx trying to lay down some harass onto that cork. He didn't see the J4 coming in time. And that will be a clean kill onto the Jarvan here. Unfortunate uh, turn of events there for the Jinx, possibly getting on tilt a little bit here in the bottom lane. Uh, <laughs> Corky uh, might as well with now six assists. Um, none of that coming in. I do not know why, uh, my thing is showing, uh, in chat here. Uh, we should have that disabled. I'm not sure what's going on here. My apologies for that. I will, uh, look into that and try and make sure nothing happens there. Uh, in the future here. But we do see Jace, uh, throwing down some harass onto that Malphite. But with that, uh, shield up, gonna be taking little to no damage here. Malphite definitely hitting the point, uh, in the game where he's able to uh, lay down some significant harass back on that Jace and have quite a bit of burst potential despite uh, going all tank with his items here. So Jace gonna want to be careful with that low HP as Cassidy farms out this mid lane here. Uh, Jinx stepping forward with the Thresh this time, looking to catch out this Corky. She does land the Zap onto him, but that will be the Valkyrie away just to be safe to make sure Thresh doesn't land any really clutch hooks there. Um, and we're gonna see possibly Collision of the junglers here. No, Wukong just going to be picking up that Scuttle Crab, uh, which will be in vision. Uh, so they will know the Wukong is out here, and they will see him start to move up into this uh, top side of the jungle. So Jace going to play a little bit safe here. Going to be trying to farm from lane. And they are looking to drive uh, this Leone here if they can get this turret down in time. Jinx, of course, the turret destroyer with that Q leveled up. Uh, taking the all their points in Q first, uh, which I'm so glad people started doing. Uh, most people started uh, when Jinx first came out leveling that zap, and I'm really glad to see people come uh, come over to the Q side <laughs> and uh, re join me with the uh, turret destruction power of the Jinx. Oh, Leona actually missing the flash over the wall there. That would have been a really great shot uh, to engage onto that Thresh. She did have the ultimate up, so Thresh probably would have been killed there, but... That wall very uh, thick right in that region, tricky to ul or flash over, excuse me. So uh, Leona actually going to be burning that flash. They will not know uh, that happened. They actually did have a ward down, so Red Side will know that flash is down. So the flash uh, ultimate and flash uh, engage for Leona going to be uh, not available for quite some time now. And the dragon uh, will be up before her uh, flashes. So it looks like... Um, no, that ward actually not going to be cleared out. They will burn another sweeper just to get rid of it here. Um, might not actually have been the correct decision given how low that ward was, but, um, <laughs> burning a sweeper while the, uh, uh passive, uh, true sight was up on that, uh, J4 from the camp, raptor camp there. Unfortunate choice there, but J4 stepping forward, baited in by that ward clear potential. 
um, actually going to be giving up his life, and that will be J4 down. He will be back up before the dragon spawns here, um, so not the worst timing uh, imaginable for that, but definitely not something you want to do. Again, giving more kills over to this red team um, is going to help them get into the late game, and with that, Cassidy and Anjinx, they are definitely looking uh, for some late game potential here uh, with that team choice, so... We're going to see blue side actually going to be rotating straight over to this dragon. Uh, there was a back from the thrush here. He probably will be able to make it back right as this dragon spawns. But it's going to be close if blue side can try and force this quickly. But uh, Kassadin going to be pushing in those minions into that mid lane. Going to actually be trying to lay some harass down onto this Jace who will think better of going in with that Wukong in the wings. That surely would have spelt his death. So good decision there. Uh, by that Jace and that will be the vision going down they do have the skull crab up as well with Malphite in the top getting some damage into that turret he does have the teleport up Blues and uh, trying to get some vision here they do know it hasn't been started with that ward on the pit and it looks like red side is a little hesitant they're trying to give some time for Malphite to get that turret so he's a hundred percent free to come in on this and they actually um, without too much vision of their own on the uh, blue side, well, they actually do have quite a bit of vision, but they're just choosing to play it safe and try and allow Malphite as much time as possible to split push in that top lane. That's why we see the Jace coming out in that recall, uh, the Zap actually missing him. Uh, so he's able to get into that top lane to try and make sure he doesn't miss too much experience there and is able to still teleport in. And that's going to be exactly what happens. They force that Jace to go B to answer that top lane and they immediately start the dragon here and it looks like they are getting zoned off quite strong here but that will be the team fight breaking out Thrush not a, the ideal target he wanted to hook there and uh, the shots coming in from the Corky who will get away from this Kassadin no Kassadin gonna ult in to catch him and Thrush just barely missing the hook there so that will be the only kill going over to the Kassadin here uh, actually, the Wukong went down as well, so that will be a one-for-one. One. And critically, the Wukong went down, so the jungler is down for red side. If they want to try and rush this dragon, they will be the only ones to have a smite despite this vision here. And that is quite a bit of damage being laid down. Malphite burning the flash to get to that Thrush. Thrush, very good play. They're able to save the Malphite, but he will be going down himself. So that will be one more kill, and with the Thrush gone as well, uh, they might want to just give up this dragon here I mean they would have to contest it 3v5 maybe a, a jinx ultimate no that is down so that will be the dragon going over to the blue side and that will be one dragon for each team Viger throwing down that CC just to make sure there is a safe disengage here from that dragon and very well done there clean dragon for the blue team definitely what they needed to do make sure that dragon uh, count doesn't get spiraling out of control in favor of the red side and that looks to be exactly what they've done here with the gold lead now uh, sizably going back over to them not too far but they are maintaining that um, and they are going to need to continue to maintain that if uh, they want to really abuse this mid game power that they will have Viger actually going to get ulted in by the Kassadin no Kassadin not going to be enough damage there at the very end Viger going to be luckily getting away and Jinx uh, not going to throw down her ultimate. She knew there was a lot of people in the way to actually have that hit them on the way through. Uh, she will just be going up to that top lane to pick up all that juicy farm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that feels real nice. Um, <laughs> but back in the mid lane here, we do see Blue Side trying to create some pressure as Kassadin goes in with the Thrush and Jarvan in the... Or Wukong Parton in the wings. Uh, Jarvan actually going to be taking quite a bit of damage trying to keep the Wukong in that ultimate. Uh, but no kills yet both sides having a couple of key members go quite low but five people are here for the red side now so they should be able to hold this off with that corky going back and no that will not be any damage substantially changing here but a hook onto leona not the best target they want they are looking for somebody a little bit squishier but they are positioning pretty well keeping those squishier targets in the back line castle and gonna ult in Gonna be caught out though in the Viger, and that will be the Viger ultimate just annihilating him. But this still is 4v4. The tides may turn, and that will be Wukong going down. No, yes, he does go down to the ignite in the end, and 
good flash there by the Leona to get out of range of the Zap, hide behind the minions. And overall, that will be a two for two. So very uh, even exchanges going back and forth here between these two teams. We actually see identical gold on both sides despite these kills. So very close game here. And that uh, burst that you did see from the Viger was his ultimate. Viger ultimate, of course, um, with that DFG. Uh, does insane amount of damage, especially to anyone who has some ability power. And with Malphite getting the Abyssal Scepter, trying to enable some more uh, ability power from the uh, Kastanen, as that will shred some of their MR here to enable that, all that Kastanen AoE that can come in after the Malphite starts the engagement. So keep an eye out for uh, the Kastanen engage with the immediate follow up uh, from the, or pardon the. Malphite engage with the immediate follow-up from the Kassadin going forward as that looks like uh, item-wise that's what they're building towards here. Some very dangerous ward games that will be some damage. Some harassment coming in onto that Leona but not too much as she is fairly tanky right now with the face in the mountain completed for her. And that Sight Stone as well. Fire, right, you're going to be getting that Q farm up as much as possible here. Uh, try and get that AP as high as you can. Let's see if we can actually check. I don't think it's actually listed here. No, it doesn't say where it is listed. No, it's actually on his Q, isn't it? Yeah, so that's 48 AP total bonus. Not a bad amount. Um, that is quite a, a large item equivalency just uh, passively given to him at this point. So, uh, Viger going to be able to blow a lot of people up, um, even if he doesn't get somebody like that Malphite, who does even now have some AP of himself with that Abyssal Scepter pickup. So while that will enable the Kassadin, um, that will be... Uh, making Malphite, uh, with that DFG combo, able to be shredded by that Viger, possibly just in one combo. So Malphite will have to be careful if he ults into that team, if he does not uh, land some critical CC onto that Viger, he might actually just ult in to lose his own life here. Um, and we are seeing both teams grouping um, as the lanes seem to be pushing, the outer lanes seem to be pushing both uh, in the favor of red side. But both teams seem to be looking for a fight here. Kassadin is back, so Blue should be looking to engage, but I'm not sure they have the vision to know that. As we look very quickly at the vision, Blue side has almost no vision except for just in the peripheries around this mid lane here, whereas Red has a bit more uh, vision, but in essentially the same areas here. So Kassadin has made it back, so it will be 5v5 again. Um, Jinx having just enough mana for that ultimate with uh, the zap and as we see the zap come out she will have to be very careful with that uh, mana management if she wants to use that ultimate cast and will be pinged out here and that will be a uh, fight breaking out right here with the wukong ulting he will not be able to land it on the last two but the malphite will and that will be j4 going down overall in this side uh, while action is continuing here malphite gonna actually have to flash away vigor not going to be able to pick up any kills there. And that will finally be the J4 going down to the Thresh in the end. Um, and overall, that is a 2 for 1 though. Uh, despite how deep that uh, Wukong did go. Thresh actually missing the hook onto Viger. Viger is still going to have to flash away, but that's a lot of damage. They're taking quite low now, and that will be the face of the mountain burn. Um, so they will not have that active up anymore for the Thresh. Viger. Um, not having the DFG, but will have quite a bit of damage, especially with this Corky, and that will be with the Leona engage. Enough giving the kill over to Corky, but Corky will trade his life with that burst from the Kassadin. So, another exchange there, but another even exchange. So this actually looking to be quite an even game coming out from these two teams here. And blue or red side hanging around. Malphite or Kassan, excuse me, does not have any mana to follow that ultimate up. Actually, could have been caught out if he was not careful there. Malphite looking to go in for the kill there, taking quite a bit of damage. But the tanky guy that he is gonna actually be able to be okay. Um, just walk away here. Gonna recall it looks like, um, and just heal heal on back up. Lots of action, quite an action pack game, a very even game as we see again the gold identical for both of these teams here. Wukong going to be doing his best to try and farm this out under the turret here as J4 clears out some vision uh, of that pink ward. Cassidy and ulting in, getting quite a bit of burst down, but with the Wukong 
uh, dropping quite as well. Doesn't have as much of his tank items completed as he would like at this point, especially with that Viger bringing the AP damage. Um, gonna be uh, dying pretty quickly, so that will be a one for one uh, with the Jace going down. And with Dragon up, Blue Side should try to rotate down here as they're doing to try and make a claim onto that Dragon here. J4 might not want to go in though, he's fairly low. If he takes any more damage, he might not be able to force this Dragon. And they will need that J4 smite up uh, to make advantage of if they're going to try and force this Dragon, which it looks like they will. The Zap going to be missed here. Looks like they're going to choose not to go for the Crab and try and get some engagement here. Viger taking quite a bit of damage though. Going to have to be careful with that Cassidy going in. It looks like that will be the Chain CC to allow Viger to be destroyed. And J4 going to go in to try and save that Leona, which he does. But that will be his uh, own life going down for it. And with Wukong back up now, he will be making it to this Dragon to smite it down. Cassidy going to just try and pick up that kill onto Leona, but she's long gone at this point. Cassidy deep behind the enemy lines. Going to lay down quite a bit of damage onto that Corky. Uh, but that is an incontestable Dragon going over to the red side. So they will have a one Dragon advantage, two to one, uh, in favor of this red side here. And it looks like they're going to actually try and pick up a little bit more uh, mid here with this mid turret, but that... Uh, Jason Corky clear on the minions is going to be quite strong, so they will be taking turret damage, but it does not matter. Cassidy just barely making it out of that with his life, but barely is enough in this game. And that ultimate will be enough. Jinx caught out saying a little bit too long, stepping forward to try and uh, auto this turret a little bit more aggressively. Actually going to end up costing her her life. So with that Viger play, with the burst coming down, even not using the DFG there, uh, that will be a 1 for uh, 2. Still in favor of the red side, but not tragically so for this blue side anymore. Kassin, going to have to be careful here. Does not know if that teleport is going to be coming in. They should know it's down on cooldown. But uh, going to play it a little bit safe here and go back. Not going to want to risk it here. There could be a Jace just waiting to snipe you in the corner. You never know about that. That is a turret going down for the blue side here. And even turret kills now. Uh, all the outer turrets gone for both sides. Very close game as we look around here. Um, Jace does have that Muramana, uh, com or Mana Moon, excuse me, completed and continuing to stack. It's about to transform here, so Jace will have quite a large spike in damage coming down. He did choose to go with the Infinity Edge here um, instead of that Phantom Dancer with the new changes to Infinity Edge. Um, and we see actually all of them uh, continuing to stick with that Infinity Edge despite uh, the slight nerf it had to the critical uh, chance, probably sticking with it. Uh, for that passive, because that passive just so strong. Um, we see a lot of key item breaks hit here for a lot of key uh, members. So this fight should be fairly bloody, and it's going to be caught out onto this Wukong, who thought he was staying stealth, but actually going to not. But that is the Viger ultimate spent on his clone. Malphite going to be going in with some CC there, and Jinx actually able to pick up the kill from deep on the Jarvan. And that will be three for nothing. No, they're going to continue to fight here. Looks like actually, no, Kassin will be able to ult away from the Jace. Uh, but Viger's still going to be trying to blow people up as much as possible. No uh, Thresh tanking up with that Aegis at this point uh, to survive that. And that possibly could have made the difference here with that Aegis passive. Um, preventing a lot of AP damage. Oh, Viger going to be caught. Viger going to be blown up. And Jace, who dared to step towards his ally, actually be uh, actually going to be going down as well. So that's another two kills and the turret going down. And that looks to be uh, the red team starting to take control of the game here. Kassadin not going to be able to make it away. Um, unfortunately, Leona might have considered using that Zenith Blade there. Uh, but actually going to... Uh, be making it out of there is the Kassadin. And so with the kill lead now going over uh, to this red side, they're going to all be looking to back and spend that gold, turn that into an item advantage here. Um, as we see um, a lot, there is that uh, Quicksilver Sash going to be bought onto that Jinx. So a lot of CC potential um, coming out from this blue side that will now be removed with the Leona, with the Viger. Um, so Jinx is going to be able to position herself a little bit better in these fights. But again, the real story of the game is this Cassidy in here. 12, 4, and 6 
with his rod fully stacked, with the seraphs fully stacked, um, gonna just be laying down quite a bit of uh, immense damage here. And have enough mana, especially picking up that blue buff as we see Leona clear out of pink here. Uh, with that blue buff, he's gonna have plenty uh, between the blue buff, his rod, <laughs> the seraphs, and that crystalline flask still being popped uh, frequently. Um, gonna have plenty of mana to ultimate as much as he needs. And gonna have to be the real target here. He's probably not gonna come in until uh, Malphite does start it off to get the most out of that Abyssal Scepter. So I'm not sure how they're gonna do this. They're gonna have to try and wait is the blue side for uh, the follow-up engagement from the Kassadin. Uh, and try and have Vigar be far enough in the back line to where uh, he won't be affected by the initial engagement from Malphite, so they can just blow that Kassadin up, and if they can, or possibly lay a pick down onto that Kassadin. Oh, but first, Jace can be caught out. Beautiful hook from Thrush, and that will be the Jace going down, and the team fight breaks out. Even with it, the ca without the Kassadin here, that's going to be simply too much. Now Kassadin finally joining in, and that will be the ace going over to the red side. Only for the Wukong, unfortunately for them. Uh, that hook to start that off from Thrush, the money hook, and that could be uh, this inhibitor going down. The death timers are fairly long at this point, um, so they will have time. Thrush just going to tank it up. His team not going to follow it up, unfortunately, but uh, that still will be at least this inhibitor turret going down. Will they stay for the inhibitor? It looks like they will with Jinx, the turret destroyer. Um, and quite a good amount of safe disengage here. They will be picking that up. Even going to stay to take these minions. Um, can't possibly be thinking they're going to go here. No, Thrush is stepping forward uh, to try and land a hook in. Um, Vyre going to not be able to catch anyone. Um, but that will be the inhibitor going down for the mid side. And with that base cracked, uh, the red side going to be looking forward to moving their wards up as much as possible into this jungle to make use of that objective control they do now have. And of course, the blue team, their wards, uh, very key positions out in the scrimmage points, so they see, or the line of scrimmage, excuse me, uh, so they will see these objectives start to be focused down. They will know this dragon is started, um, but I'm not sure how much they'll be able to do about it. This uh, Wukong is not here during the start of this uh but neither is J4. They're both going to be getting here a little bit late. But now uh, they will both be here to contest this objective. If uh, the third dragon, uh, the fourth dragon, does go over to the red side, making that the third dragon for them, that could be. Oh, but Jinx caught out. Uh, the Cataclysm going to be flashed out of, and actually, uh, it will be uh, J4 going down instead, going a little bit deep on that Jinx, and again. The clone for Wukong tanking up so much of that damage from the Viger. Unfortunate for this Viger. Gonna be really needing to put that out. And oh, Kassin and ulting in. Gonna clean them up. And Jace, it looks like having a little bit of lag there. I'm um, gonna have to flash over that wall. But you cannot escape a Kassin in, Especially one this fed. And that's another ace going over to the red team. And that looks to be the game right there. This simply gonna spiral out of control. Minions... Uh, super minions even getting into the base here. They might, uh, the ping's coming out on that Baron, so they might just go over to that Baron and quite a lot of damage going down on this turret. It looks like J4 will get up to stop that in time, uh, but they will decide instead uh, to just back off and not uh, start off uh, this Baron um, as they just do a quick check here to see if there's any vision on it, which there is not, and Blue Side going to be very hard pressed to come into this game. Uh, those past couple of team fights just have not gone to their favor despite that really strong start uh, and really close game. Um, it looks like they're just not able to continue that forward. And with those team fights, uh, that will be the late game beginning. Um, and specifically, what I mean by that is Jinx has now fully hit her stride. Uh, Corky's damage is starting to fall off a little bit. Um, as we do see that A just fully completed into the locket uh, for Thresh. Um, everybody getting a little bit of AP here except from that Kassadin. Um, but Corky's uh, magic damage is going to largely become irrelevant here. Um, and he will not have as much uh, auto damage uh, as a normal ADC will. Jace is going to be making up for that largely. Um, and with some smart, smart toggles from now this fully stacked Mirror Mana. Um, he will be able to lay down quite a bit of AD damage. 
Um, but that will be the blue buff stolen over. Gonna force the flash from Corky. Also gonna Valkyrie over the wall there. And it looks like Thresh getting quite a bit of damage in there with uh, the pick potential coming out. Not gonna land that hook, but in the meantime, that was this inner turret going down and they will fall straight back here. Gonna sweep along the way, go right up to this Dragon Pigeon with they knew from before is clear. So blue side will not know this is going down and they have a sneaky suspicion but also aren't quite willing to go that far out in case if there is someone like this cast in line and wait oh and he sees the jace coming and he's gonna look to blow him up just a simple q uh followed up by his w or uh, excuse me his e gonna take out probably like 80 percent of jace's health and that will be an easy kill and now jace will be down for 30 seconds as uh, Red Side looks to push into this top lane without that Jace wave clear and with the Baron Oh accidentally <laughs> popping the ultimate is Thresh for some style points showing us that beautiful uh, Blood ultimate um, with that sexy sexy Thresh skin uh, but That will be Viker going down to the Cassidy who just simply ults in and that's the amount of power this Red Side does have now the AP carry can ult in and solo the Vigar. Uh, just a horrible turn of events there and Corky will be going down that will also be the Leona this looks to be the game here um, if the red side can get this um, those uh, Nexus hurts have largely healed up but this is just absolutely a meat grinder right now one by one the blue side going down and that will be it with Jinx uh, picking up the final kill onto the Jarvan there the game is over stylish uh, <laughs> teleport in the end there from the Malphite and that is the game unfortunately spiraling absolutely out of control for this red side from those team fights uh, to a final gold lead of 18,000 uh, just absolutely uh, spiraled out of control for the blue team Uh, so let's look over some of these final statistics here really quickly. Um, we do see all that damage if we can actually scroll over here. That uh, Kassadin was an absolute nightmare. 40,000 damage onto the champions. More than any single two people of the blue team combined. Um, so Kassadin really putting on a show. Definitely going to be looking to have that Kassadin banned out against him in the future going forward. Um... But that is the power of a Kassadin who does get going, um, absolutely able to go in and blow people up. And again, I cannot emphasize this enough, he had no MR built at all. Um, and Vigar, with his DFG, with the death cap completed, and with his ultimate giving bonus damage built, or uh, based on how much uh, AP was built, Kassadin was able to ult in and blow up Vigar and be unanswered. Uh, to just wait for his cooldowns in the Zonia's invulnerability. So that is just the story of the game. How far out of control this Kassadin snowballed. But we do want to absolutely give credit to uh, not only the Jinx who was able to come out and go come back and go quite positive after that uh, uh, very tough start to the laning phase. We want to give credit to this Malphite who despite being bullied uh, fairly largely in the laning phase, as you will see with that CS, went 5-0-15, never giving up a single kill. So very good props to that Malphite there as well. Um, and that will be the game uh, going over to this, uh, um, uh, excuse me, going over to this Twitch team here. Uh, so in future Twitch games, remember... <laughs> Remember the Cassidy, I guess, is going to be the battle cry um, for the team. So we're probably going to be seeing that ban out going forward. But thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the game. If you uh, did, feel free to uh, go to the After Hours Gaming League website. The schedule will be posted there. All these videos uh, will start to be posted there as well. And, of course, uh, you can subscribe to this channel. I will be uploading all the games I cast to this YouTube account. Uh, so if you want to stay in touch uh, with the uh, After Hours Gaming League uh, uh, games that are casted going forward for the season. Stay tuned to those sources, and I hope to see you next time.